In this video, let's get started with Google Docs. First, after we've signed into our Google account, click on the App Launcher or the Google Apps dots at the top right of the screen. Look for and click on the blue vertical rectangle with three white lines in the middle of it with the word Docs underneath it. If this app icon is not immediately visible, use the scroll bar on the right to scroll down until we see it. Here's a live view of that process. To move the icon up in the list of apps so that we see it every time we click on the app launcher, we will click and drag the icon to move it up in the list of apps. This way, every time we click on the app launcher, we will see the Google Docs app immediately without having to scroll. Now we'll click on the icon. Once we click into Google Docs, we are taken to this page. If we click on the add or plus sign on the left, it will open up a new document or a doc and we can start typing away. Or we could choose from one of two resume templates. There is a letter template, a project proposal template, and a brochure template. At the bottom of the screen, we'll find the recent documents. Here, we will see a quick view of the last documents we were working on or viewing. The quick access is super convenient. I see the vacation journal that we were working on. Another way that we can access Google Docs is to click into our Google Drive. Our Google Drive is where all of our Google Docs and other projects using Google tools or apps are stored. In our Drive, we click on New, and this will open up options to use a variety of apps or tools, but we want to open a new Google Doc, so we click on Blank Document. If we are opening Google Docs for the first time, we will be given a series of helpful tutorial prompts. This one offers us help with tabs, which we will discuss here in a moment, so we'll click Got It to close out of it. And here we are with a brand new document and with a new document with nothing typed on it, we're going to be offered several template options. When we click on templates, it takes us to a much more expansive bank of templates. When we click on meeting notes, we are given a well organized template to follow to document a meeting. When we click on email draft in our Google doc, we are given a template to start drafting an email. If it is our first time using this template feature, we will be offered a tip on how to connect the draft to an actual email sent from our Gmail or Google Mail account. After we've drafted our email, we could click on the M icon to the left of the draft, which will say preview in Gmail. And then this is what the email preview will look like. And all we have to do is click send at the bottom. When we click on the more template in a Google Doc, we will be taken to building blocks, which provide further organization and structure to our projects. Scrolling down will reveal more options for organization. The first words of what we type on the doc can become the title of the doc if we simply click at the top left of the screen where it says untitled document, and it will save the doc with our typed words on the first line. Let's create a tab for every day of our vacation journal Google Doc. Let's rename each tab as day and then a number. Click on the add sign to add a tab. Click on the three dots to the right of the tab name to open up the tool options. This is where we can add a sub tab, duplicate a tab, we could delete a tab, we could rename a tab as well as perform other functions. The tabs function is a great way to organize documents with multiple pages into easily accessible components. Here, I'm going to rename a copied tab by taking out the word copy of and changing the number to correspond to which vacation day I'm creating a tab for. So now we have three days worth of tabs to fill with journaled content, which can include text and pictures. On our newly created vacation journal, we're just going to start typing to get some thoughts recorded. One of the great things about Google Docs is that as long as we have an internet connection, our work is being saved in real time, so we don't have to worry about losing what we have typed or created because we forgot to save it. There is a work offline option if we know we will be working without an internet connection, and this function is found under File and choosing Make Available Offline. So as we start typing, we might want to change the font. So we go to the toolbar at the top of the document where we could change the size of the font. We could change the font type as well. If we liked the original font, we can undo what we just did or changed. We can click edit and click undo, 
or we could click on either of two back or forward arrows to go back to a previous draft or forward to one we had previously edited and would like to reestablish that edit. Let's review how to insert images on a Google Doc. Here we are in our vacation journal. I'd like to upload a picture or an image, so let's go up to the toolbar and click on insert. Then we'll click on image and we are given options which are to upload from our computer, search the web, upload an image from our Google Drive, from our photos folder, from our camera, or we can paste the URL to an image. In this case, we're going to upload from our photos folder, so I'll click on that. This will open our photos folder and I will double click on my chosen image. When the picture is inserted on the Google Doc, it looks relatively big on the page. So let's make it smaller. We need to click on the image so that the border or edit frame is visible. The first of two options that we'll review will be to make the image smaller through the image options feature. We can decrease the width and the height will simultaneously decrease. We can make individual clicks or we could click and hold to manipulate the size. We can also rotate the image. We can scroll down and adjust other features of the image. For example, we can make the image more transparent and less opaque. We could also make the image brighter or darker. And we can increase and decrease the contrast. And if we don't like any of our edits, we can reset the image to its original features. And that is essentially the long way to resize our image. The shorter of the two ways is to simply click and hold one of the corners of the image's border and then pull it towards the center diagonally. Let's review how to share a Google Doc. First, at the top right of our screen, we'll click on the elongated circle with the word share in the middle of it. Next, we'll notice that the default share status for the Google Doc is restricted to you, the owner and creator. When we click on the arrow to the right of the word restricted, we're given two options, either to maintain the restricted status or to click on anyone at the link. When we click on the anyone with the link status, we're given further options, which is to allow anyone with the link to be a viewer of the document only. We can also give commenter status, which means that anyone with the link can make comments on the document. Or we could give editor access so that anyone with the link can type on the document and add or subtract content. Here, we've added our Aunt Tina to the Google Doc and we've given her a commenter status. Now she could read our vacation journal and make comments. To make a comment on a Google Doc, go to the toolbar at the top of the doc, click on insert, and then click comment. After clicking on comment, a comment box will appear and Aunt Tina can type her comments. When she's done typing, she will click on the comment tab and her comment will be visible to us. Let's imagine that we wrote some new content in our journal, but for some reason we don't see it. It's like it just disappeared. But don't worry, we could click on the clock icon or the version history icon at the very top of the Google Doc. We could see from the message below it that the last edit was two hours ago. When we click on that clock icon, the version history opens. We could see that Aunt Tina made the last edit and accidentally deleted several paragraphs. So we'll restore the doc to the last version that we edited. We'll click on the three dots and then choose restore this version. Or we could click the restore this version button at the top of the screen. This will take us back to the version before the content was deleted. Upon further investigation, it looks like we gave Aunt Tina editor access by mistake and she accidentally deleted some paragraphs. Just so it doesn't happen again, we will restore her commenter status. 
Let's review how to use voice typing on a Google Doc. First, at the top of the screen, click Tools and then click on Voice Typing. A microphone icon will appear and underneath it, it says Click to Speak. If we are using voice typing for the first time on our device, we will get this message stating that Google wants to use our microphone. We'll click Allow while visiting this site so that we don't get this message again. If we don't speak clearly or our microphone is not connected, we will get this message that says, sorry, didn't hear that. When the microphone is active, it will be a reddish orange circle with a white microphone inside. Also, there will be a microphone icon in the web address bar. We can click, hold, and drag the speaker to where we think it is most convenient for us. And when we are ready to record, we just click on the speaker. We will not need to hold the speaker button, but voice typing will record our voice when we are speaking. When we are speaking, we'll see the multiple rings or circles around the speaker icon. And here's a live view of the process. I think we hiked for three hours today. Here are some voice commands for using the voice typing function. First, we need to say or speak the punctuation. If we need a comma, we need to say comma. And if we need a period at the end of a sentence, we need to say period. When we say new line, this will start a new paragraph. Saying delete last word will delete the last word that you said. Saying clear all will clear all of the text in the document. To edit text, use commands such as copy, cut, paste, and delete. To stop the voice typing from typing, you can either say stop listening and it will stop transcribing or you can click the microphone off. And here's an example of using voice commands with voice typing. I think we hiked for three hours today, period. New line. While we were hiking, comma, we ate apples, comma, oranges, comma, and mixed nuts, period. This has been a Get Started with Google Docs video.